When we wake up in the morning and have had a dream during the night, we just say, it was all a dream, and carry on with our daily lives. But have you ever wondered what the difference is between the real world and a dream? Is it that we are able to perceive what we refer to as the real world by means of our senses? But how would we prove reality if we one day lost all our senses? These questions, nearly as old as mankind itself, have been the subject of much scientific inquiry. The interesting thing is that the subject has recently been the subject of several box office record-breaking films. These films have attracted so much attention that the debates over them continue, even though they are no longer on general release. In this film, we shall be evaluating facts about the true nature of matter by examining a few of the films in question. We shall see how the world we imagine to be real is actually a collection of illusions experienced in our minds. Neo is a computer programmer working for a large software firm. He has not the slightest doubt that his life is real. Yet he is mistaken. Neo actually lives in a totally artificial world. His real body is in a capsule-like device filled with a special fluid. Like millions of other human beings around him, he is made to live in a vegetative state by the machines that rule the world. His brain is connected to a computer equipped with the most advanced technology. A virtual world has been created in Neo's brain by a program in this computer known as the Matrix. He sees only what he is shown and can experience only what he is made to feel. He imagines that what he experiences there and the life of the late 20th century are actually real. The fact is, though, that he is being kept immobile in a kind of suspended animation in a capsule in 2199. In short, the life that Neo imagines to be real actually consists of perceptions artificially generated in his brain by a computer. A group of humans led by their leader Morpheus who have escaped the clutches of the machines are aware of this. Morpheus separates Neo from the computer and rescues him from the machines and enables him to become aware of the Matrix. He will also teach him a great deal he does not know. He reveals, for instance, that so far, everything Neo has seen, heard, smelled, tasted, and felt has no physical reality, and proves to him that all his experiences were imaginary impressions created in his brain. Virtual reality and a world made up of electrical signals. Neo first has to understand the basic logic of the Matrix. The Matrix is a highly advanced computer program that creates virtual reality in the brain. The world that Neo imagines himself to live in is just part of this program. After freeing Neo from the Matrix, Morpheus and his men began educating Neo with a program similar to the Matrix that they have prepared themselves. Neo lies down in a chair with wires attached to his head and waits for the software to be loaded for his education. When the loading is complete, he opens his eyes somewhere totally different. His appearance is very different. His clothes have changed and his hair is longer. 
This is the construct. It's our loading program. We can load anything from clothing to equipment, weapons, training simulations, anything we need. Right now, we're inside a computer program? Is it really so hard to believe? Your clothes are different, the plugs in your arms and head are gone. Your hair has changed. Your appearance now is what we call residual self-image. It is the mental projection of your digital self. Neo still does not believe he is in a virtual world. He is also terribly confused about the subject of reality. This isn't real. What is real? How do you define real? If you're talking about what you can feel, what you can smell, what you can taste and see, then real is simply electrical signals interpreted by your brain. Morpheus's reply reveals a most striking truth. What we call real is actually an interpretation of electrical signals transmitted to the brain. We perceive the outside world thanks to our five senses. This, however, is no proof that we are dealing with the material equivalence of what we perceive in the outside world. For example, we cannot say, there is a table here, just because we see one. Because the eyes that see the table are merely an agent, there are receptor cells at the back of the retina in the eye. These cells turn the photons that land on them in an electrical current, and nerves then carry that current to the visual center in the brain. The visual center in the brain interprets this electrical current and forms an image. In other words, when we say, I see something, we actually see the effect created in our brains by the transformation of the light waves reaching the eye into electrical signals. All these facts we have described regarding the sense of sight also apply to hearing, touch, taste and smell. We perceive each one of these in relevant centers in the brain. We can never make direct contact with their counterparts in the outside world. In fact, when connected to the matrix, Neo too does not actually see those bright vivid images with a physical eye. The things he imagines to see are actually an interpretation by the brain of the signals reaching it. What are you doing? Your muscles have atrophied and we're rebuilding them. Why am I, sir? You've never used them before. One character in the film The Matrix makes the following comment with regard to the food he eats. You know, I know this steak doesn't exist. I know that when I put it in my mouth, The Matrix is telling my brain that it is juicy and delicious. It is, therefore, a grave error to say that the world we live in is real simply because we perceive it. The world we perceive is merely a reflection of it in our brains. To put it another way, no matter how realistic it may be, the world we perceive consists of an illusion in our minds. Today, computer-generated three-dimensional images